Hi there, welcome to this lesson on uh, playing your first tune on your Anglo concertina. Uh, you may have uh, a CG Anglo concertina and you may have a uh, GD Anglo concertina. Uh, let me just show you one I've got here and then you can decide what you've got. So when you're a beginner, all concertinas look the same, don't they? Uh, but this one is a, an Anglo concertina. We know that because it's got these kind of slightly curved rows on both sides. So this one is a 30 button because it's got uh, 15 buttons on this side in three rows of five and the same on the other side. And this side has this air button which um, you push in and when you get a bit more advanced that becomes uh, an integral part of your playing. Okay, it's not just for opening and closing the bellows. Um, now you may have a 20 button which means to say that this front row here on this side and here is missing so you'll have just uh, these first two rows here and here um, now the the two likely candidates are CG and GD well, this is a CG we know this because those three buttons there on the left hand side buttons uh, three four and five give me the notes CEG same on that side it's a C chord C, E, G. So this note is C and this note is C. So button 3 and button 6 are both notes of C. So you can play your uh, concertina to see if it sounds the same. But this is when you push the bellows towards the closed position because obviously if you play those buttons and pull the bellows out you get different notes. If your concertina uh, is playing the same note on the push and the pull it's not an anglo. So therefore this, this lesson is not relevant to you. It'll either be an English concertina for which I've got lots of free lessons or a, a duet which I, I don't have. Okay, so this row is the C row and this row is the G row, the higher pitch row. But we're only going to use the C row. So on this 30 button we're only going to use the middle row here and here. We won't use the row furthest away from us, the player, or nearest to us. And also with an English concertina, uh, you'll have little loops to put your thumbs through. This doesn't have that, it being an angler, it has these kind of hand straps. And this is where the hand goes through, okay? And I don't know if you can see that, um, there's this block here, okay? So you put your hand through and you do it so that your fingers can easily reach the buttons. I've got very long fingers so um, obviously you'll probably be slightly different. The right hand, the thumb should be uh, able to operate this air button although you probably won't need that in this one and the fingers likewise available for these buttons. So don't forget in this tune we're only going to use the middle row which is called the C row. Okay so this row here coming up here and down here. Um, I'm going to do four videos on this tune, Silent Night. I'm going to do a single note and a harmony version uh, for a CG like this, concertina, Anglo concertina. And I'm going to do the same just in case you've got a GD because lots of um, beginners have these uh, German concertinas which look like they're wood grain but they're not. They've got kind of a, a felt tip pen uh, effect for the wood grain. Um, I have one of those. If you look back, you'll find that and um, you'll be able to play uh, this same tune in the key of G. Okay, and I'll do that on my GD. All right, so just to make sure you're right, buttons three, four and five on the left hand side, they'll give you a C major called C, E, G. So the way the buttons are numbered on the left hand side, the button nearest the floor, I call button one. Not everyone does this, this is the way I do it. So button one, two, three, four, five, and over on the right hand side carries on six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You notice they're all notes uh, in the chord of C major. They're all C's or E's or G's. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Remember, if you've only got a 20 button Anglo, uh, you won't have this front row, so it will be the row 
that is furthest away from you but not on this 30 button okay i know it's a bit confusing that's the problem with with anglo concertinas they they are a little bit confusing because of that all right um now fingering on the left hand side index finger this one here uh, deals with button number five and finger number two deals with button number four and finger number three deals with button number three and we're not actually playing buttons one and two the right hand side finger one deals with button number six okay finger two deals with button number seven finger three deals with button number eight and the little finger isn't used because we don't play um, button number nine or button number ten okay so basically it's three buttons either side either on the push or the pull okay so make sure you understand that those terms push is where you play the button and you push the bellows towards the closed position okay and pull is where you play a button and pull the bellows out when you push you are um, expelling air from the instrument and when you pull you're bringing air into the instrument so when you pull you'll see the instrument gets longer as more air goes into the bellows so we're going to do Silent Night the tune you, I'm sure you know Christmas Carol of course probably the most famous Christmas Carol of all and we're going to do it on this instrument in the key of C now this version is called the single note version so we're simply going to play one note at a time all right so if we look at our music there we can see um, that curly sign which is the treble clef uh, which is this thing here okay and that's at the beginning of every stave the stave is the five lines that the notes are drawn on three four is the time signature which is three beats in the bar four because it's quarter beats three quarter beats per bar don't worry about that because you know how this goes so you won't really have to worry about that and then we're into the music over here so you can see a few strange things here um, this first note is a G if you don't know how to read music I've got uh, some sheets you can download uh, from my website to teach you how to read music but this note is G in point of fact you won't really have to worry about what the note is because all you've got to do is look at the uh, finger on top you can see this number one which means finger number one um, and it says left hand so left hand finger number one which is the index finger it's going to go on this button here which is button five and if you uh, press that button and push in you've got your first note of the tune which happens to be a G okay second line up on the treble clef this one here is G and that's your first note so make sure you pulled your bellows out a little bit notice how I rest the right hand end right hand cheek on my right leg you can do it on any leg you like any cheek but don't put it over your leg because you'll wear your bellows out so that's how I do it okay so pull the bellows out a bit don't have to open them right out just something like that is fine get your uh, thumb on top of course with your hand strap your fingers inside and make sure your index finger is comfortable over that button number five press the button push in gently but firmly and you've got your first note now the next note uh, is this one here I'll just identify it there and it's also finger one also left hand uh, also button five I should have said underneath I've got the the button numbers are so five five and notice the, the letter names the note names G this one's a because this one is on the pull okay so if I press the same button and pull out I've got my second note which is A now notice I put this little dagger sign underneath now what that means is you can get that note without repressing the button keep your eyes on my first finger and the bellows notice I didn't lift my finger up and repress the button I simply rode the button as I pushed and pulled and that's what I do you can of course repress the button if you wish but you don't need to okay and then the third note of this first bar the third note is the same as the first note it's a G okay and it's on the push 
So basically our first three notes sound like this. And notice that note's got a dagger. So that one can also be played with that first press. So in other words, in that first bar, you only need to press the button once to get those first three notes. You can hear the silent. Uh, you can hear the first part of the tune coming out. So to sum up, everything in the first bar is played on one button. It's button number five on the C row. Don't forget if you've got only two rows, it'll be the front row. If you've got three rows like me, it'll be in the middle row. And some Anglo concertinas have more buttons than this. They have up to 40, maybe even a few more than that. And that'll just mean you'll have might have a few extra buttons here. Okay, some have slightly less. This front row, which is called the accidental row, might have less than five buttons in it. You have to try and decide uh, where your C row is, but it's pretty easy to identify. Notice I'm sitting up straight. Out shot here, I've got my uh, right foot on a guitar footstool to keep my leg up. Uh, rather than, you know, if it's on both feet on the floor, you can see my leg's gone down and my, my concertina could start sliding off my legs or my leg. You know, you've got to get comfortable with the thing and feel like you're in control of it. That's very important. Don't forget, I'm assuming this is your first or one of your earliest tunes you're playing on this instrument. Okay? So it's all good so far. We've got G, A, G. One button pressed and three notes. And the dagger means just hold on to the note. So we have played G, A, G, button five, button five, button five. Uh, if you want to understand the music, it's three beats of the bar. This is a dotted crotchet. It comes in on beat one, lasts for the whole of beat one and half of beat two. This is a quaver. It's got a little tail. It's on the end count of two. And this is a crotchet. Same as the first one, but no dot. And comes in on beat three. So you would count that... Um, one, two, and three. So the dotted crotchet is on the count of one. The A is on the end count of two. One, two, and three. And the final G is on beat three. So there's a lot of information, isn't there, on that first bar. Uh, but it's all there to help you. Right, let's go to our second bar here. And the note is E. It's on the first line of the treble clef. So it's a lower pitch note. Basically, look at the heads of the notes and you can see how they give you a kind of a musical landscape. The higher up the stave the head is, the higher the note sounds. The lower on the stave, the lower it sounds. So this is a lower note, it's E. Now, it says finger two, okay? So you'll know you're going to go to button number four, this one below button five. It's a push and it's the note E, and it's still left hand. And this note looks very different to the other notes we play because it's a round open note with a stem and a dot. It's a dotted minim, and it lasts for three beats. So put those two bars together. Okay. One, two, and three. One, two, three. Silent night. G, A, G, E. Those are the notes you play. So, so far, we've only played notes on the left hand. The right hand is ready to go, but we haven't used it yet. Okay? Let's look at bars three and four. Notice bars one and two aren't labelled. The first time we have a bar that's labelled on this type of musical software, which is called Notion, is here uh, on bar three. See? So... Bars one and two, we know they're bars one and two, so we're going to do bars three and four. And the good news is, as you can see, uh, bars three and four are the same as one and two. So let's play those first four bars after three. If you feel able to, play along with me. I'll count you in with a three. Remember to pull the bellows out. One, two, three. Two, three. Two, three. Now notice there, I didn't do anything with my air button. So because there's so many notes on the push, my bellows are gradually closing up. Okay, so just be aware of that. So that's why you need to pull them out before you start to play. Make sure you can do those four bars before you move on to bar five. 
Now in bar five, you can see the first note has got RH on top of it because it's going to be played on the right hand. It's a note of D, it's on the fourth line up. And by the way, you look at the head of the note to decide where it is. The stem only helps you with how long it lasts for. It's the head of the note, gives you the pitch. Fourth line up on the treble clef is the note D. So this is D, so it tells you underneath. And it's right hand and it's button seven and it's on the pull. So lots of information there. So remember these first five buttons on the left hand side give way to the next five buttons on the right hand side and it's button seven. So this is six. So this is button seven. This is the note we want on the pull. So you're starting to pull the bellows open, which is good news because you've had so many notes on the push. Your bellows are beginning to close up by this point. So you want to pull out. So finger two, the note is D. And the next note is also D. It looks different because the first one's a minim, two beats. And the next one is a crotchet, one beat. So this D comes in on beat one, last of beats one and two. This D comes in on beat three. So basically you're going one, two, three. This is all is, all is, all right? So D, D. So two notes on the right hand side on the pull. And the note, the only note, the dotted minimum, in bar six in a bar of three four a dotted minimum will fill that bar because it lasts for three beats this note is b on the third line up of the treble clef it's button six which is the first button on the right hand side and again it's pulling so in those two bars we have d d b one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay, so everything on the pull there. Let's drop down to bar seven now. And we have to stay on the right hand side. It's button six. Now we played button six last time, but we did it on the pull. If we push, this is a note of C. And we're going to play it twice in this bar. Like in bar five, we've got a minim and a crotchet. One, two, three. So look at the information there on that first note. RH is right hand. Number one is finger one, index finger of the right hand. It's a minim, a round open note of the stem. It's on the push. It's button six and it's a note of C. So one, two, three, four, five, six bits of information there. And the next note, like I say, the same note, but a crotchet on the third beat of the bar. And then this note here in bar eight. Uh, is a note of G and it's on the left hand side uh, it's the note we started on so it's button five finger one on the push like I say it's a G and it's a dotted minimum so bars seven and eight sound like this all on the push so you're moving from the right hand to the left hand Let's zoom out and see the whole of that first page and play those first eight bars, shall we? Now notice that the first and second bars are the same as the third and the fourth. Then we have five and six, seven and eight. So bars one, two, three and four, all on the left hand. Bars five and six and seven, all on the right hand. And bar eight is on the left hand. So let's open our bellows out and let's play the whole of that first section, those first eight bars. And I'm going to count you in. So if you practice this, you'll be able to play it along with me. And I'll do it nice and slowly. One, two, three. push and pull you know your concertina will kind of bend up a bit I mean obviously don't don't go too crazy with it you don't really have to push it in so it's completely straight the whole time the expression of this instrument comes from how hard you push and pull it's all in the bellows it's not how hard you push the buttons that makes no difference at all experiment with different volumes let's just play that again and put a bit of expression into it okay
and uh, it's beginning to sound pretty nice. You can hear the tune uh, nice and clearly, can't you? When you push and pull, you don't have to go crazy and go you know, push really hard or pull really hard, but make sure you're positive because if you don't push properly, you, you might get a bit of a weak sound or pull properly. So make sure you're positive with it without going too mad, okay? Right, let's scroll down and do the next section. So we're looking at bar nine, and you can see the whole of bar nine is on the left-hand side, LH. It's finger one, so we know it's button five in this piece. It won't be the case for every tune you play, but in this nice, easy uh, piece it is. So button five, left-hand side, finger one on the pull will give you the note A. Notice this note is on the second space up. If you're not sure about the, the stave, uh, we have lines and spaces. This head of this note is in the second space up here. And again, it's a minim and then a crotchet, same note. So you have one, two, three, the note of A. So all that information, left hand side, finger one, note of A, on the pull, button five. Okay, so one, two, three. Now we're going to jump in bar 10. Notice bar 10 isn't labelled. It's only the, the first bar of each stave is labelled. But this is bar 10, we can see that. Because you can see bar 11 below that. We're going to go to button 6, first button on the right hand side. And it's the note uh, C on the push. Okay, dotted crotchet, so it comes in on beat 1. Last for the whole of beat 1, half of beat 2. What a dot does, it adds on half the original value. Okay, so this is one and a half beats. So C on the push, and then without uh, lifting your finger off, you can play the next note because it's the same button on the pull. Notice C on the push here becomes B on the pull here. Both button six. See the dagger to indicate that? That's just peculiar to my music. You won't find that on other concertina music. C going to a B. Okay, so you have C on the push, B on the pull, and then you return to the note you played in bar nine, which is the note A as a crotchet. So let's play bars nine and ten. And you can hear the tune very clearly there. Now, bars eleven and twelve are the same as the first two bars because you're going back to your... Okay, so that's nice, isn't it? And then 13 and 14, 15 and 16, same as 9, 10, 11, 12. Let's just play those. So this is 13, 14, 15, 16. When you have those dagger notes as I call them, where you just hold onto the button. That's where you can lose your volume. So make sure you, you know, pull or push whichever way it's going, just a little bit harder um, so that you don't lose the volume, okay? So let's drop down and do the last part of the tune now. Right, so bar 17. Now, up to our note of D, which is right hand, RH, finger two, it's a minim, round open note with the stem, on the pull, button seven, the note D, like I say, and then again, same note as a crotchet. So it's one, two, three. Now, for the first time we play this note, which is F, right hand, finger three, so we know it's gonna be button eight. Okay, that's only in this tune, don't forget, because it's nice and easy. So, button eight on the pull, Gives us F, it's a dotted crotchet. And this is nice because these three notes, if I just play them, all on the pull, like that, and in an actual fact, that's actually a G7 chord. If you play those three notes together, you'd have a chord of G7, even though there's no G in it. Just trust me, it is a G7. So we have button eight, button seven, button six. So you have next door neighbor notes, uh, next door neighbor buttons, I should say, uh, F, D, B, okay? So all on the right hand, finger three, finger two, finger one, F, D, B, eight, seven, six, and you count it one, two, and three, because it's dotted crotchet, quaver crotchet, which is a very typical 
timing in 3-4. So let's play bars 17 and 18, all on the right hand. OK. Now, a couple of nice easy bars here, 19 and 20, both on the right hand side. So you've got a dotted minimum in each bar, one note in each bar. So you've got button six, button seven. Three beats on each note. It's C, E, finger one, finger two. One, two, three. One, two, three. Nearing the end now, bar 21. We've got finger one on the note C again. Then we're going to change to the left hand straight away. So C on the right hand. And then you've got G and E on the left hand. So finger one on the right hand, button six. Finger one on the left hand, button five for the G. Finger two, uh, button four for the note E. And they're all crotchets. One, two, three. One uh, beat per note. So right hand, left hand, left hand, push push, push, button six, button five, button four, and in fact, that is a chord of C major. C, if you like, uh, broken up into its component parts. C, G, E. Now we're getting lower here, so the last part of the tune is all on the left hand. Obviously, as you get over on the left hand side, towards the floor, the notes are going lower. As you go to the floor on the right hand side, the notes are getting higher. So we're getting progressively lower here. And we're going to come back to in bar 22. Let's just highlight that for you so you know where we are. So we have a G on the push, button five, finger one. Okay. And then we're going to come to uh, button four again. On button four on the pull, finger two, we're going to have an F, which is an octave below the F we played on the right hand side there. And then still pulling, button below that on the pull, we've got the note D. So you've got G, F, D, push, pull, pull. But all on the left hand side, so finger one, finger two, finger three. So let's play bars 21 and 22. And now we're at the end and we've got this bar here, bar 23. And notice this note has got this kind of hoop leading to this note. It's the same note, it's called a tied note. So we're going to play this note, which is a C, low C. We're only going to play it once, but we're going to tie it into this note. So we're going to play this note and count three beats for this dotted minimum and three beats for this one. So in other words, this note is going to be held for six beats. And it's this button here, it's button number three on the left hand side. And it's finger number three and it's the note C and you count one, two, three, one, two, three. Let's play those last four bars, 21, 22, 23, 24. That sounds like this. So that's the uh, tune complete. Let's see if we can show you the whole tune. I would definitely recommend printing the music out to uh, play the tune rather than reading it off your computer or an iPad or a phone. It comes up pretty big as you can see. My eyesight's not great so I, I have a pretty large font here. So it's three pages but it's much easier to read it off this and that's what I'm going to do now. Right, pull your bellows out. I'm going to count you in with a three. Let's play the whole thing. And you know, don't be frightened of it. You know, If you make a mistake, it doesn't matter. Um, if you, this is too fast for you, slow it down and then gradually build your speed up. So after three, starting on the left hand side, uh, button number five, finger number one, the note is G. Here we go. One, two, three.
may find as you sustain those, you get a bit of a throbbing sound. I'll show you what I mean by that. Now you see what I'm doing? I'm doing it like a gentle pulse on the side of the instrument. And some people hate that and some people love it. And I sometimes do it, but it can get a bit trying if you go over the top with it. I would think as a beginner, just try and get a, a clean note without the throbbing, the vibrato. So what you're aiming for is Okay, so obviously the right hand is held quite firmly. The left hand obviously wobbles a bit because it's kind of floating in midair. You're only holding it up by your hand. The right hand, you've got it on your leg if you're doing it the same as me. I mean, you might be on the other leg, so it might be the other way around. And everyone's got their, their own pet theory about this. And it's a folk instrument. There's no right or wrong. So it's whatever takes your fancy. So there we are. That could well be your first tune that you've learned on the CG Anglo Concertina. And it's a really good one to do. I did do a video a couple of years ago on a tune called Go Tell Aunt Rody. And I called that kind of a first tune. But actually that was fairly tricky because that was doing chords on the left hand uh, and a tune with the right hand. This is much, much easier. You're simply playing the tune. There's no accompaniment, although you can do that on this instrument. I've literally got you simply playing a tune and a tune that you know and I've got you developing some good habits. So this is a great way to start off on your instrument. Um, I'm going to be doing exactly the same video but for the GD Anglo Concertina. So we'll be playing it in the key of G but it's exactly the same buttons just lower pitched. Um, I'm also going to be doing a slightly more advanced version of this where I'm playing this tune, but I'm playing a little harmony. So I'm going to be playing uh, two buttons at once for quite a lot of the tune. Obviously, that sounds a lot better, but it is a bit harder. And I'll be doing that for the CG and for the GD. Um, I have got a lesson for Silent Night, a more advanced version, um, which is a, a paid for one. But that is quite a lot more advanced and not recommended for you if you're a beginner. So this is a great way to actually start on the instrument. I really hope you enjoy learning this one. Um, it will give you a great start on the instrument. If you've got any questions, you can get in contact with me either via YouTube or my website, which is www.daddylongles.com. Um, look out for those other videos on this tune. Uh, at the time of recording this video, it's uh, getting towards the end of October, so it's a good time to learn Silent Night uh, for Christmas, obviously, that's coming up. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you liked it, uh, give it a like, uh, subscribe to my channel and uh, you'll see me in my next video.